Um, so I'm not going to go too much into the introduction. Uh, perhaps if, if I could add one more question to Koi's questions. How many of you remember Vanilla Ice? Ah, uh, okay. I think we have critical mass for a joke, which I'll, or something that you may. So just park that. Uh, for the others who do not remember who Vanilla Ice was, you can check him out later uh, on YouTube. Um, so, thank you. The first thing that I'd like to um, talk to you about today, uh, as you can see from the title, it's about uh, one of the I don't know if people call it secrets, but it's something that people, we don't really talk about that much, this word collaboration. Um, it's actually not as easy as most people think it is. Uh, there are scientists who are uh, at MIT Media Lab, Ed Boyden, who are looking at this question of how do people collaborate, uh, particularly uh, specific capacities as individuals and also as groups. And then there's also other research that is done around um, the uh, idea of crowdsourcing and neural networks, all these things. Um, these are open questions. Uh, but I'll share a few things from my experience uh, through leading uh, tech companies all, and also from other things that I've done uh, before Ushahidi and after Ushahidi. So the first thing that I'd like to share is how many of you believe that the greatest thing that you will do in your life will be as a result of you as an individual, as the lone genius? Ah, okay. But how many of you have read of stories of people being put on pedestals as the lone genius and the person who came up with this and did this and boom, we've got this piece of technology or this big, huge company. How many of you have heard of that one lone genius? Um, and there are many. Uh, I think the latest, uh, and I'm a bit of, a, bit of a fangirl, as uh, many of, some of you may know, but uh, there's a lot of, but you know, if, if Elon Musk showed up here, I would totally go, oh my God, oh my God. But, um, you know, when you think of, uh, other uh, people who are pit on pedestals as the lone geniuses, you can think of people like Steve Jobs, uh, Elon Musk is the current favorite right now, uh, and a few others whom you, you, you've you come across. So this is a myth, uh, and it, it bears examination. I think from my experience and also the experience of others, you, may, you will realize that some of the most incredible things that you will do uh, will be as a result of you working with other people. Um, just to illustrate this, in the early days of Ushahidi, uh, myself, Eric, Ori, uh, David, Daudi, Segeni, others, uh, bloggers, basically the Kenyan community, we worked together from different places around the world to come up with this prototype within four days. And it wasn't based on, oh, there's this pot, pot of funding or, oh, there's this thing. No, no, no. That it was something that we were doing out of our own volition. Um, we had other things that we were doing, but we just came together in order to uh, put technology together in service of our country. So the key thing is um, the lesson is to stay open, to connect with other people who um, may share your interests, however niche it may be. Because at the time when we connected, it wasn't like uh, we, we had, we had a, a platform to speak from or a platform to collaborate. The only thing that we had in common that bound us together was one, the internet, and the fact that we cared about Kenya. And in some shape or form, we saw the power of technology to do something. And that's how we, we, um, we, we came together. So however niche you may think your interests are, connect with those people. Because uh, either online or offline, you, would nev you never know how you may end up working together and what incredible things you may do together. So um, this is the vanilla ice bit. Uh, a summary of that first part is stop, collaborate, and listen. Did that land for some of you? Okay. All right. Um, so 
and the, la the other part about collaboration is for startups and also for corporates and big companies. We need to think about how are we um, sharpening our skills in terms of our capacity to work with other people. It's not easy. It really isn't. There will be times where it will be quite difficult where you're like, well, I'd rather deal with a robot or an artificial intelligence machine learning thing rather than a human being. But the thing is, you, we have to increase our capacity to deal with other people and to collaborate. And for startups and corporations, we need to think about the companies that we own and run and how we are configuring it for collaboration with other corporations. And I think there's a powerful uh, space where corporations can work with startups and collaborate with startups where startups can solve problems that big corporations just do not have it in their DNA to do. And those structures of that collaboration are still being set up. However, you will hear some interesting stories over the year of examples of corporations working with startups in different configurations. And I think that is a space to be um, explored. Um, this, uh, one of the th other things uh, about the, the part about uh, working together and collaborating is failing together and trying hard things. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, I think about three years ago, yeah, two years, uh, three years ago, about three years ago, uh, at Ushahidi, we tried to use machine learning um, to create a, a piece of software we called Swift River to sift through uh, the crowdsourced information to make that auto-generate reports. We didn't realize that it was a very, very difficult problem. Yet, we were still using a very small budget to go after a very, very difficult problem, but we went after it anyway. And we took the learnings and made something. We, need, we made a prototype. It, it didn't work perfectly, but the thing is, it wasn't a complete failure. And what we did is we made that code open source, and it's available on GitHub. If you, go, uh, if you really want to uh, extend that, you can go to GitHub and just search for Ushahidi and Swift River, and the code is there. There's some bits and pieces that went on to be used for other pieces of software, but then um, if you've been following the technology news lately, there have been a lot of advances in the field of artificial intelligence. It's just that sometimes you have to push the frontier and do some hard things. And um, when you lead organizations and you're part of those organizations, you need to have an appreciation and an acknowledgement that some of these uh, things can be difficult and to prepare yourselves to either succeed or fail and make sure that that is, uh, not, uh, that is not detrimental to the organization and to the individuals involved. The second point uh, that I'd like to share with you this evening is diversity as an important, important foundational resource for you. Um, we all um, there's this quote that I just uh, saw today uh, in my notebook. We don't see people for who they are. We see them through the filter of everyone we've ever known. We don't see circumstances as they are. We see them through the filter of everything we've ever experienced. Now, what that tells you, uh, in addition to, um, you know, just think about the lens through which you view the world and look at the lens that your coworkers, your colleagues, your collaborators, present and future, and try to understand with what lens are they approaching you and they're approaching the company. And um, there's an, uh, an author called Adewale Ajadi. He wrote a book called Omoluabi, which looks at uh, complex systems and how to apply the theory of complex systems to uh, African um, political uh, and economic problems. So do check that out if you're interested in some of that. But in it, um, and uh, also online, he talks about diversity being the spectrum of humanity. So think about that lens, and then think about the spectrum that's available to you, not just firsthand in terms of the people that you work closely, closest with, but also through the internet and other collaborators that you, you may find 
through um, being open and engaging with people through other networks. What that brings is it increases the types of possibilities of things that you could do. And in the realm of technology, we have a richness of experience. Uh, and we, rich, we have a richness uh, and a diversity of problems. And we need to look at each other's skills, experience, and those lenses that you are thinking about as something to bring to the table, to be acknowledged and regarded and understood so that we can bring those lenses. I'll give you an example. One of the early days when, uh, this was before Ushahidi uh, became big and became uh, scaled around uh, the world. David uh, Kobia, one of the co-founders of Ushahidi, was uh, coding most of the, the, the software in Atlanta. Had a very fantastic internet connection at the time. Um, how many of you remember GPRS connection? Uh, <laughs> how many of you remember what an edge connection felt like? Right? So he was developing the software in an area where he didn't have to think about GPRS edge or any of that. But when I came back to Kenya and I was talking to these different organizations and also even myself just trying to upload a picture to Flickr and about hitting my head on the wall because it was taking so long, um, it became clear that my experience, the friction that I felt in interacting with the software here, it needed to be fixed. So he came up with a faster algorithm and a way to make sure that the page loaded faster and could load on an edge connection. And I believe that that realization and that, that he was willing to listen and uh, we were able to iterate fast, it's one of the things that helped us scale because the software then went on to be used not just in Kenya, but in South Africa, in Gaza, in uh, many, many countries, over 150 countries. And uh, out of those 150 countries, you have varying levels of connectivity. Point is this, diversity of experience, of location, of skills, is an, a very, very important resource, particularly when you're talking about building technology that fixes problems. So you have to pay attention to the friction points and do something about those friction points. But you have to be willing to listen um, in order to actually make a change around that. Um, and I think I mentioned this when I began, uh, that diversity in the way you look at it from a foundational point, um, it, it's no, it's no ac I, I think maybe it was kind of, uh, it was a really good thing that Ushahidi was started uh, from a foundational point of view that we had two women and two men, right? That it's not like later we said, oh my God, we are not diverse enough. So we need to add somebody, no, 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 no. In your startup and in your corporation, you need to think about diversity, not just of gender experience and all these things, but think of it as a foundational part and a, a very important thing that you weave into the DNA of your organization from the very beginning. Um, it will pay dividends in more ways than you know. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, I mentioned about uh, technology helping in terms of uh, iterating fast and being nimble, but also scaling plans that, you know, if you can solve for some of those um, diversity of experiences or friction points uh, in different places, that that can help you when you're thinking about scaling beyond a specific country. And um, more often than not, having a different mindset uh, can also help you to um, do things differently, which most people call that innovation. So I will end by uh, the last point, which is uh, this idea of non-linear thinking and seeing beyond founders. Uh, it is not just the founder or CEO of a company. There are so many key roles in tech organizations um, that need to be celebrated, that there are men and women uh, in, um, in the tech industry who are just as important in the tech narrative. Uh, we're talking about the uh, the project managers, the software engineers, uh, the hardware engineers in some cases. And um, you need to think about 
that uh, holding them up and including them as part of the story and not just thinking this is the, the one linear story. And um, one of the key things that you will do um, as part of your company, uh, your startup or uh, your organization is the constitution of your team. It's one of the most important things. Um, I think it's Margaret Mead that said, um, do not underestimate the power of a small number of committed individuals to change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. So the way you put together your teams is extremely, extremely important. Complement the diversity with a culture that is unique to yourself, to your organization, and um, one of the key things that you'll need to remember, uh, again by Adewale Ajadi, is that um, if nature abhors a vacuum, diversity hates apathy. That you'll need to think about the culture that you create that abhors a vacuum, that you create a culture that does not breed apathy, that um, does not value diversity, that does not, um, because the consequences of that is chaos. It's problematic. And you do not want the negative part of diversity. What you want to do is actually harness it in a constructive and positive manner. And um, last but not least, it's just this question of what are the hard problems that you're solving for and who you're doing it with. Um, and uh, really, at the end of the day, it still comes down to um, what are you curious about, what are you open about, and who are you going after these problems together with. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.